Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, broadcasting on the DVC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 122 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with Trevor and Damon. What's up, guys? Hey. Hello. Hey. What's up? We've been talking for like 20 minutes already. Yeah. <laughs> but, You're not supposed to tell people that. You're breaking the fourth yeah. wall. No, no <laughs> because we, we talked about something so cool. It's probably the coolest thing we've ever done. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I would I don't, agree. <laughs> I'm scared to hype it up, though, because like we haven't seen it yet. So like, But I'm excited about it. Yeah. I, I, you know. I would agree. And again, I'm also excited about my, my what's it called thing coming at some point. My wood Oh, card. your wood sign. Yeah. 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 I'm super excited about that. It's very, um, it's going to be very interesting. I have this feeling though, once I get it and people see it, they're going to want one. Did so wait, did you like finalize the design and they're like, yeah, the person's making it now? No, but they, they're no. so, all right. They, you know what? You're in so, the queue. You're in the queue. I am in the queue. And um, if I remember correctly, I can kind of give some insight into the last one. Okay. This is, uh, I'll size it up to full size, change the text. The text was just changed a little bit and the little details. And I'll get back to you when that's done. This process though, I'm going to tell you, even though it's not uh, Raymond doing it, the process is very like, if you're the sort of like person like I am that kind of wants to be like, Hey, let me know what's going on. Hey, this... It is not that process. It's like you send an email, it goes into the ether, and you'll eventually hear back. But that's it. <laughs> like it, it, it's it's a process. It's definitely a test and patience. I can imagine his is even far more so. It's like it's like when you email us. I I'll respond. I usually respond once a week to all emails. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just because I I you know I unfortunately I don't get to do it usually during the week. But yeah, but no, that's that's cool. So you you see, so finalize your design now. You just yes. gotta wait. She hasn't told you though when like how long it's gonna take or anything. No, I I think it's gonna be one of those things where I have no idea, and it's just gonna be like wow. The only thing I'm like I said I'm a little worried about is I don't want it to be. I wanted I wanted to give it to the family for Christmas, but I feel like uh, I'm not necessarily sure if I could wait that long. <laughs> yeah, so like once you get it, you're just not going to be able to keep it quiet anymore. I, I, exactly. So I'm trying to see how much it actually was. Okay, so it, it, it was it was a little bit more expensive than than I remember. It's eleven hundred. Okay. Yeah. To the sign. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. not nowhere near what what uh Ray costs, right? No, he's definitely not. Way more. <laughs> yeah, for the sort of work that I'm having done, yeah, absolutely. I think he's like a minimum like three grand or something. I if, if I remember mm. correctly. He's minimum pretty he's pretty high. Yeah. For those yeah, signs, yeah. So yeah. That's, Rightfully so, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah. And listen, this is uh yeah, this is art, right? I mean, you're having custom art made for you. So yeah, it's, it's beautiful stuff. And you know, I'm I'm excited to see what yours looks like when, yeah. when it's all done, Damon. For sure. Should we tell people what we're doing, or do we want to? We want to. No, 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 we, we should stay quiet. I, about I, I don't think we should say a word until it All just right. magically What if something appears? comes out terrible? Right, like that's what I always worry that's, about. That's like, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to yeah, pump it up if it comes out bad. Yeah, th- th- this may completely die on the vine, so we'll see. <laughs> but <laughs> this but isn't I, one of the. This isn't one of the things that we've said we were going to do. By the way, that's not going to happen. This is happening. It's just you know. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's in progress. So it is, so. Yeah. We are working on it, but if it hits a certain point and it doesn't work, then we'll have to see. <laughs> now I want a thread in the group of what of what like reckless speculation of what this is, just since mm-hmm. we're being so vague about I, it. <laughs> well, you know, for for our listeners, you know, th- this is prime meme opportunities, right? <laughs> I feel like if you're a longtime listener, you should kind of yeah. have some idea. Yeah, that, that's a hint. That, that's a hint. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's That's <laughs> questions questions all right let's all right, yeah, let's questions. get into it <laughs> all right so uh becky uh wrote us uh via email and uh thanks for writing in becky becky's uh becky's in the group a lot too so uh, i have a question for you three in your opinion what do you think it, it is about dvc that makes us want to keep researching long after we become owners and used it do you think it's about justifying the cost more than we more than we did prior to purchasing um <laughs> probably gonna get some damon answer here no that's stupid who cares I don't think it's. D- I, Damon, I get very like, offended like when people don't <laughs> realize like what I care about and don't care about. I yeah, definitely care about saving money. Like that's true. He does. Yeah. 
Yeah. So she goes, or is it just the addicting nature of planning vacations, whether or whether or not you can go on them? I personally researched and bothered Derek for like three years before we purchased and don't necessarily have add on itis, but of course want to plan more trips all the time. The numbers we research, the numbers research, we wait, the numbers research we poured into it never justify another contract for our family anyway, but the desire is still there. I don't, there's kind of has to be a deep Mm. question. Mm, I don't know about that. Like for me, it was very easy. I priced out one trip and it was more money than both of my contracts together. And I was like, why do I ever need to look again? Because I've already made my money. I mean, in theory, right? I mean, it's not made my money. I don't consider the reoccurring yearly cost to be that big of a factor. Once I saw one vacation, because, right, that's kind of what it comes down to is, you know, once you've done one huge vacation and that vacation was a was, you know, a borrow saved points one. So really consider it three years of points just to make it easy was more money than both of my contracts cost. So three years, I'm good. Don't really need to look at it again because it's cost effective, right? My, My dues are never going to be what a room costs ever. So I was good once I saw that. I didn't really need to go too long after that. Every once in a while, I mean, every, like, and I would say every few years, maybe I'll go, oh, I wonder what, you know, a room at Saratoga for the week costs. But that's usually about it. Go ahead, Trevor. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I kind of, I'm at the same point too, is, you know, like the first year or two, I was like really like checking on it and being like, you know, do, does this still make sense? Did I make the right choice and everything? But then, yeah, as we've gotten into it and we've taken some vacations, you kind of relax because like you said, Damon, you know that you've or you know it's already paid for itself and you're already at a point where yeah, you know th- those dues every year. It's it, like for me it's like I I pay I have a local lake community, so I'm paying lake fees for that. So the dues all like it's all kind of the same thing. It's like, you know, I pay it once a year. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't think about it for the rest of the year, but I'm getting I'm getting this thing out of it. Right. And then, yeah, what I actually literally like last week, I did this myself was I went and I looked at how much a, uh, uh, a rack rate room would cost at the poly. Mm -hmm. And I did that and I went, Whoa, okay. Yeah. This is why I'm doing this. Like you only have to do it every few years. Yeah. Yeah. But just like the jump in price, like I I realized that, uh, yeah, like if, if I had continued staying on rack rate, because we were doing that when we were going to, to California, we were staying at the Grand Californian, which is, you know, a a deluxe resort. And when I looked at, at the cost of staying at the poly, we would like, I would have not have been able to stay there the last couple of years if it wasn't for DVC, like flat out. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I don't think, I, and it's interesting because I don't think I continually research mine, right? Like, I, I only do research, I feel like, when I want to buy another contract or kind of like you said, every once in a while I'll take a peek at, like, what it would have cost me. Like, when I looked at uh, the trip, the last trip I took, which is, you know, October 2019, and we stayed in a two-bedroom Savannah view, and it would have been, like, $11,000 for that trip. I was like, yeah, see, this was a good decision. Like, you know, um, it's... It's that kind of stuff. I I think it's, you know, every once in a while I look, but I'm not constantly researching it. That's for sure. And actually, I I guess the other point, too, about Becky said about researching, um, I I think for me, it's, you know, that that's kind of part of trip planning, I guess. And, you know, the fact that we don't go like we're not there frequently, like every month or couple of months or whatever. Um, filling the time in between trips, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a good way to, 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 you know, I, I don't want to say waste time, but it's, it, it's just using, you, you know, like you, you plan your trip and then it's like, oh, you know, maybe I should go back and check if, you know, there's anything DVC that I can factor into this trip or is there any, you know, is, is there something that I can change to make this better? Right. Like it's, for me, it's just a continual thing that I do. It's not that I'm like, I'm sitting there going, you know, do I need to buy more points? Is it, you know, is this the breaking point? It's just more of a, I'm bored and I want something to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I also yeah. think like it keeps you excited about it too. Yeah. Right? Like it does. Researching. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. It, it keeps you excited for your next trip. It keeps you excited for staying in the resort. Like it, I, I think that's part of it too. So it's a good question though, Becky. I, I guess it was deeper than we, we thought it was. <laughs> uh, you want to read Jeremy's question? Yeah. Um, so, so Jeremy has posed a hypothetical situation. So oh you're staying at your favorite WDW resort, a pipe bursts in your room and wet a bunch of your belongings. You're offered 
two choices. Uh, one, a full refund on the, ex- on the existing room, points or cash, and move to the same room type. Or two, no refund, but free upgrade to the most deluxe accommodations regularly, regularly available at the resort. Grand Villa, Bungalow, Club Level, whatever. Which do you choose? So do you go... I like this. I like it. D- do you take basically a free trip? Or do you... Or do you get the upgrade that you normally would never pay for? I feel like this is tough because I want to know, like, when does this happen during my vacation, right? Uh, first day. Yeah, let's say first, first day, day, right? Okay, so, we're saying so first it's, day. Yeah. I'm so, saying upgrade then. I go upgrade if it's first day. If it's last day, I go refund. <laughs> well, you can't cheat the system like that. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying that's what I would do. Um, I'm going to go refund regardless, because here's the thing. If I get all that money back, I'm getting it back. I've already paid up front, right? And here's the thing. Point, oh, but I'm getting only points back. Yikes. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Th- this is a tough one just because it's points. If I was getting cash, like if I was getting <laughs> rack rate back, that would yeah. be easier. I think for points, because I'm probably not going to go again. Darn it. I don't want to say it, but I would take the upgrade against better judgment. Because really, what is the points but an upgrade, right? At the end of the day, I I guess the thing is, is if you get the points back, like you said, is you know that 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 can potentially translate into another trip of the well, an upgrade, or you know, you take you take another trip, which you know that does incur a whole bunch of additional cost. Of course, of course. So this was easier than I thought. Yeah, uh, and I'm at, I was actually leaning towards the upgrade purely for the fact that you know it, it's an opportunity that I may not have ever had to begin with. So but really, is there an opportunity there that you'll never have, Trevor? Well, I mean, bungalows are pretty far outside of my. Um, uh, well, what's I should a, say what's right a now, bungalow point point wise? Uh, so a lot. It, <laughs> yeah, if, if I was to stay there for a week, it would yep. be like 600 points. And how many points do you have? I have 175. So, Times three, right? Uh, it still comes up short. <laughs> but not not short enough that you couldn't do it. Uh, well, I mean, it w- I would have to pay a lot of extra to do it. So so the problem is, is that it doesn't, like, with with, with the way that we travel and everything right now... Um, it seems pretty far out of my reach. So right now, yes, I would take the bungalow. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, it's hard to say. <laughs> a a two-room yeah. two bungalow is typically between 800 uh, to... It can oh, get as high as 1,500 for a week. Okay. Yeah. I just pulled it up now. So, like, depending on when you're traveling, like, the lowest for a week is 841. The highest is uh, 1454. Yeah, I guess it makes sense for the upgrade then. Yeah, because most nights it's going to be, yeah, it's most most nights for a bungalow. It's going to be pretty pricey. Yeah. So, like, my my thinking was eventually I would do, like, a split stay in a bungalow. Mm-hmm. But, okay. uh, yeah, like I said, if, if I was given the opportunity where I was just handed one with my yeah. current points, I would be like, yeah, I, I think I'll do this. <laughs> See, I don't, again, like, I don't care so much where I'm staying. So that's why it was tough to say free upgrade. But, again, I think I just have to. This this next question is interesting, though. So, I, Jeff. I, I like it. I like it. So this Go is ahead. from Jeff. You are several years and 122 episodes into the show. Probably more than that with the wait list, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Ah, are you where you thought you would be at this point? Has your community has okay? Has your community you created met expectations, exceeded them, not lived up to them? I think nothing's lived up to what it should be. You all suck. No, I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, will there be another two hundred twenty-two episodes from here? Will Tom have the show notes done? Damon's liking. So, so Tom has definitely upped his show note games, but I, I wish. <laughs> I, I wish somebody could like, I think Tom, it, it, this would be a great episode to post the show notes from like, just okay. for somebody to see them. Like Tom does a really good job. I don't like his indentation formatting, but he's, he's gotten better at it. So I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, um, I would say that from a show standpoint, it, it's difficult to say that it's exceeded expectations. And it's also at the same time, difficult to say that it hasn't lived up to him. I think we're at a very good point, but I, course always would like to be bigger at you know from where we are but i I think it's been you know it's worked out extremely well but i think from the standpoint of community i think it's exceeded expectations i like everyone in the community i think a lot of people are funny and that's been the part that's been most enjoyable is the, the the funny aspect of the community we've created 
without the nonsense of people necessarily being a jerk, right? Sometimes it's a fine line between funny and not funny when people are trying to be funny. And I think everyone does a great job at that. And I would say that, you know, the group has definitely exceeded expectations. And sometimes I even worry about as, you know, it gets bigger, I hope it continues in the same vein that it currently is. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes when those groups get really big, you kind of lose some of the culture. We're gonna do, and the fun we, and will just, we will <laughs> just totally ban people, though. I'm going to tell oh, you yeah. right now. There is not going to be this, hey, you, it's just going to be you're gone. Like, that's it. Right. Like, so that group will probably not be as big ever as some of those larger groups, but it will be more fun. I, I do have to say, I think today or this weekend is technically our four-year anniversary of the show. I, I actually think it is. Okay. Um, so this is kind of a well-timed question. Uh, so I, I think Jeff, the interesting thing about this is I don't think we came in with any expectations, right? Like no, not at it's, all. <laughs> it's really hard to build an audience with a podcast and it's really hard to, um, especially when there's so much out in the marketplace, you know, like that was the first thing that we, we said when we started, you know, when I, when I put this out there, the first thing, you know, you get a bunch of comments, like really another Disney podcast, how many are there, you know, like you really need another one, you know? <laughs> and so it, and, and that can discourage you because at, at the same time, yeah, I mean, there are a ton of Disney podcasts to listen to and you can, you have a lot of choices. And so for, uh, you know, for us to be where we are at this point, I think is, I, I think exceeded any of our wildest expectations because we really didn't have any expectations at the time. And, and I don't think we ever knew that we would create a community of cool people that like are funny and fun and, and enjoy listening to us do this every week. So I, you know, I think it still blows us away every time, you know, we put out a new episode and to just to see people email us and message us and, and uh, you know, all of it and you know just nice reviews anytime we see anything about this i think we're, we're kind reviews, of taking it back one star yeah. review <laughs> <laughs> but all of it i mean you know listen even a one star review at least they listened to us and they cared for a second enough to do that so yeah. <laughs> you know not in the way we want them to but you know it, it's yeah i don't know I, I i think we've said this before we're just constantly blown away by anybody listening to this and the fact that as many people listen to it as 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 you know we have now and i think what i say what did i say previously 23 countries we have that have listened to the show at some point it's absurd <laughs> like it's just absurd so i yeah far beyond my wildest expectations and you know i i think back to i i remember one of our initial conversations like i, I think it was even before we did the first show we were, you know, we were talking about it and, and having that conversation around, hey, you know, this is, you know, we don't know what, how this is going to go. We don't know if anyone's going to even listen to us. And at the time, we all agreed that, you know, we're doing this for us. We were doing this because we wanted to talk about Disney and we wanted to, you know, have this forum for DVC and, and Disney talk. And, and at the time, like, I, I think I remember, I think all of us said it like, you know, even if we only end up with like five people listening to it, whatever, like, you know, you know, at least we get to have our say and, and, yeah. and talk. So the, again, you know, the fact that, that it's gone way beyond that and it's, you know, it's formed into, you know, like you said, that we have this whole community. Now we have this whole, um, just, you know, a really great culture around it. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't have asked for that. I, I couldn't, have, you know, four years ago and you said, Hey, you know, you, you know, you're going to be, you know, a pod, like in four years, you're going to be having this podcast and you're going to have, you know, thousands of listeners and all that. And I would have been like, yeah, right. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> like, do you remember how excited we were, we were when we hit a hundred? <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's yeah. great be, because like, like you said, you know, I think initially we came in with no expectations yeah. and I, I think the great thing now is that, you know, I, we, our expectations have definitely shifted and, and the expectation has turned into, you know, not that we're like, oh, we want to be, you know, the biggest podcast ever. It's that, you know, we want to have a great community and we want to have, uh, I, I feel it's that, you know, it's, it's a positive experience around talking about Disney and DVC and all that. And just, you know, you know, staying engaged with everybody else that has the same mindset. So that's it's what I want to see going forward, right? It, yeah, it's definitely nice to have that outlet to talk to people about something or ask questions, right? So I think for me, it was a little different already being in kind of the, you know, the game of this and from a website standpoint. So I think it's all worked out well. I think the other thing that everyone really needs to understand is that each one of us has a different skill set that makes this work. 
And, you know, we always go through and people will ask us advice for shows, right? And things like that. And it's, it, it, you have to remember while, you know, this definitely has exceeded expectations. It, it was the, the three differing opinions and views and skill sets that really made this happen. Because I can tell you, I never want to do what Tom does for the podcast. <laughs> and even on the Netflix podcast, which has been doing extremely well, I made sure I was smart enough to not have to do what Tom does for this podcast when I was asked. And I think that's a big thing is making sure that everyone has their lane. And that's what makes it so hard Yeah, is that we just lucked into everyone having a podcast personality that was so differing and worked for everybody that made the show a little bit more enjoyable. And I think that's what works for us in general. Yeah. yeah it, was, I, you know, it was lightning in a bottle, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, and that's, you know, cause you listen to some kept podcasts and there, there are some podcasts out there, Disney podcasts included that are kind of boring. Like, you know, and there's, there's some other ones out there that I've listened to. And I'm like, who's listening to this? This is boring. Like, I don't want to listen. And you know, people can like us or hate us, but the one thing you can't say is that we're boring. <laughs> we're never oh, we're boring. Definitely not boring. <laughs> so yeah. we, we definitely can never be called that. So, um, I, you know, I was just thinking to myself how fun it would be to, and also, so terrible and cringeworthy it would be to go back and listen to the first episode i uh, will refuse i can't yeah i, <laughs> well, I can't I thinking, listen to myself <laughs> could we do funny. like a, a react like a waitlist reaction that's what i was gonna say oh, yeah. do like would, a mystery science theater like yeah. yeah oh no i would do that i would do it <laughs> yeah we do like a mystery science theater listen to our own like uh our own maybe, first show maybe yeah. we should do that while tom's on vacation like that should be what, what we do. do yeah that, maybe that's it right there i'm, I'm okay with that i'm on board That'd be really funny. <laughs> yeah, I definitely would do that. Yeah, and, so, and that lines up good with it being, you know, four years. Then we yeah, can kind yeah. of see where we've come from. <laughs> oh, I, I think I think it'd be funny if we listened to how us saying how it's the no, going to be no gondolas, and then <laughs> 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 yeah, just no, that's stupid. There's no gondolas. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so right. yeah, no, I think that would be kind of funny if we did that. Um, I, 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 it's a good idea for a wait list. There we go. All right, so, so Francisco's next. All right. So if you were staying at BCV and planned on having a non-park pool day with family and or friends, would you consider splurging on a cabana for $300 at Storm Along Bay? No, I, I wouldn't. I, I think I'd rather eat $300 than spend it on a cabana. How many people can a cabana hold? Because like, if you can get 10 people in there and you can split it between 10 people... Uh, Thirty bucks ain't bad. I'd, I would probably do. It well, remember, you're you're gonna. There's gonna be kids involved that aren't oh, that's paying. True. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, paying. yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't like the cabana splurge personally, unless I'm on a cruise, and we still haven't even done it on a cruise because they're so hard to get. I, I couldn't do it, but I, I get the feel. But I, I couldn't do it. I'd rather splurge on food because three hundred dollars is a lot of good food. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and yeah. I would never have ten people to split that kind of defeats the purpose <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true yeah uh, this, that's a fair point. this next one is uh, oh my goodness i all right this is this is a great question dan, dan. you know again you were you were dan. you were having a little bit of a, a you know a slump so this was a, a good re, good return dan to form doesn't like when we're mean to him like this he's gonna, he's gonna I, lash I, out <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is a really good one, though. So imagine a challenge to plan out the lamest day at Disney World. What would your plans include? Where would you stay? What parks would you attend? Rides to go on or rides to avoid to keep it lean? And where would you dine? Okay, so I'm going to go first here. And I have to say, you have to stay in Disney World. So if I'm staying at the lamest place, it's the Polynesian. No, I'm <laughs> it would be. Oh, man. It, it would probably be the All-Star Sports. Okay. Okay. So that's the that's the part. Let, let's do this by. We'll do it that way, and I'll let you guys pick your two places to stay, and then we'll continue on. I I go I go all star music. I think it's what I. Was Ooh, dude! I spent my honeymoon at music. That hurts. Do you, do you like music? I do like music. Okay. Um, I would agree with sports. Sports is like my okay. least favorite resort. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah. now we're going to go for food. I, I think that if you were forced to eat at sports all three meals, that is the lamest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. You can only eat in food courts of the of resorts. That's the only No, not even. Like, you have to no. eat just at sports. All Star. Yeah, yeah. At All Star. Can that it be any All Star or just sports? Well, they're all the same. So. Yeah. yeah. They're all the same. Yeah. yeah. So let's just say All Star eating at All Star. So now what parks would you attend and rides to go on? This one is really, really, really difficult, but. Oh, this is going to be so tough. I'm a Magic Kingdom. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm a Magic Kingdom, guys. And and I'm going on um, the, the Jasmine Carpets. 
Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going oh. on Dumbo. Absolutely. I'm going on the Barnstormer. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going in the Tiki Room. Oh yeah. Ooh, I love okay. the Tiki Room. I don't. I'm going in the Tiki Room. You're hurting. I'm going on. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. I, I hate to say this because I love it, but I'm going on Swiss Family Robinson. Okay. okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. Oh, what about the Riverboat? You're going on uh, Liberty Bell. One hundred percent. It's lame, right? I have yeah. to go to Liberty Bell. So I think that's what that's the lamest park for me. Huh. Okay. Oh, and I'm going to Philharmonic or whatever that one is. Yeah. Oh, Mickey, uh, I, M- yeah. Mickey's Philharmonic. I like that. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that show. <laughs> but again, it's not like yeah. It, it, if that was the highlight of your trip, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do you want me to go next, Tom? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I sorry, would go ahead. Yeah, I would go to Hollywood Studios, but uh, no Galaxy's Edge. It would be the Frozen show. It would be Beauty and the Beast. Um, I would do the. Go on some rides though. Uh, Okay, Um, so I would do Alien Spinning Saucers. Yeah, yeah, it would be yeah Alien Saucers would be that would be my my kind of dig that, but okay. Star Tours, I like it too. Actually, even though I I could see Star Tours, yep, I could. Even though I like Star Tours, again, still, if if that was like the only, how about old Star Tours that made you sick? That would be tough. Yeah. Yeah, no, not even new. Like, yeah, I guess it, you know because they have the the different ones, right? So, you, yeah, yeah, you get you just get the old ones. Like, yeah, you have to the tell them. I only ones. want the old ones. Yeah, and then I would also do. Um, hmm, I would. I wouldn't even like. I wouldn't go anywhere near Rock and Roller Coaster Tower of Terror. It would be yeah. It would be mostly like the shows, and then Alien Saucers and Star Tours, and that would be it. Uh, okay. Yeah. And no I'm fantastic. just gonna pick a park where it's all <laughs> coasters, and then no, he no, no, no. I, I, I actually think if you look at the the, I don't want to say the majority of the most boring rides. I, I do actually do think you're right that it's that Magic Kingdom day, but I think mm-hmm. it's you know you you have because I mean Animal Kingdom. Most of the rides in Animal Kingdom are are like really fun rides, with the exception of like Triceratops Spin, right? So like the rest of them though are great. I enjoy all of them. So you, so you would yeah. do Primeval World. For like, oh, well, that doesn't count because it doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't it's, exist. It's, it's, oh, okay, it's, fine, yeah. fine. Yeah, that doesn't count. But I mean, at least <laughs> yeah. that ride is not boring. It's kind of thrilling. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that that ride's got at least got some fun to it. Um, but yeah, so I feel like Animal Kingdom has a lot of good stuff, and Epcot. I don't want to say because a lot of the stuff at Epcot's really, you know, it, there's no rides I can think of. I mean, I love Spaceship Earth, but I mean, I, I guess I could ride that all day. But I think Damon's right. I think Magic Kingdom's the way to go here. You go on Small Worlds a million times. You do uh, I Carousel love Small Progress. World, man. I, yeah. You know what? I, I, I love, love all it. these things, man. So <laughs> you like you like it, Small Worlds? So, so yeah, I do. So yeah. is Carousel of Progress a ride or a show? I would I'd say give both. it a ride. I think I, it's I, both. Yeah, I it, I give it a ride. I give it okay. a ride. I love I love Carousel of Progress, and it's not just a nap place for me. I just I like yeah, it. I love Small World, man. Yeah, I, I like it too. But you do- I, I think you hit the nose with Barnstormer. It's like <laughs> Barnstormer is so it's, bad. It's the biggest letdown. Like I, I stood in line for like thirty five minutes for it and wrote it with my kid, and I have it on video. The look on his face when we yep. finished it, and he looked around like that's it. Like <laughs> that's pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, at least it could, it goes around twice, doesn't it? At least it no, it twice. doesn't. No, I it thought it did. Once. No, okay, because I only went on it the one time, and I was like, you know, I, I went out by myself because I just wanted to. I'd just never been on it, so obviously I didn't go with my kid. I just literally just went on it, and it was it was like, all right, this is fine. I think that's like the lamest part of the park too. I hate to say it, but that circus that area, area is stupid because it it's uh, it a fit. remnant of Toontown. That yeah, yeah. No, it just doesn't fit. Yeah. So so yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of with you on this though. I think I think that's that's where you go, right? Uh, and I mean, I, I I love People Mover, but some people would probably include People Mover on that list too. Of no, nah, I like People Mover. Yeah, yeah, people that's great. Yeah, Pe- People Mover is a staple. I I could I could ride that all day. Like yeah. I could too. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm I'm actually pretty disappointed because they pushed back the refurbishment again, and I really thought I was going to get to ride it, and it's still closed. I mean, it's been closed for over a year now. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Get that thing fixed already, you know? I think this next one is Trevor, though. Yeah. Uh, well, so, sorry. Bobby oh, wait, we got the question we got, there. Yeah, well, yeah that, we have the Tom one. So, uh, yeah, Bobby we, says I, I got to answer May Bobby's one. question. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bobby says, I'll be in Epcot May 1st while I get to meet Tom. That's a good question. I will also be in Epcot May 1st. Uh, so I told Bobby on, on Facebook, if you can find me, then yes, absolutely. Wait, uh, is, is, is you still going to have hats? Is that yeah, the yeah. best? 
I'll, I'll bring pins with me this time instead of hats, just so I don't have to lug around hats. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I think you bring one hat though. Tom. Just one, <laughs> just like yeah. a golden hat. It's a like... golden hat. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know if I have any hats left. I have to go look. I think okay. I only have misprints left. I maybe have one or two. Okay. Um, so I, but I, I can bring a hat and some pins. But yeah, if maybe we'll have the. It... Oh no, May first we won't have the cool new stuff. Sorry. No, unfortunately not. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but um, but listen, I, I'll I'll tell everybody right now, you know, and if you want to come find me, you can. That's cool. Twenty uh, ninth of April, I will be in Magic Kingdom. Thirtieth, I will be in Hollywood Studios, and May first, I will be in Epcot. So, if you are in any of those places and want to find me, I'm happy to meet you and say hello. So, there you go. That's your answer, right. Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's do uh, Susie's question. Um, she says. Do you think international members should get special treatment um, in brackets points extension if they're not allowed to enter the U.S.? Um, she, she goes on to say, as a U.K. owner, there's a lot of discussion about the subject. Initially, um, she was thinking we shouldn't get special treatment as we knew it was in America when we purchased. However, on the other hand, there's some benefits that only American owners can access that international members aren't able to. So maybe there should be international benefits. Um, I guess my... My thinking on this is that, to your point, you know, we we all knew what we were buying. We knew we were buying a timeshare at an American resort. And, you know, nobody knew that that a pandemic was going to happen and we weren't going to be able to travel internationally. So um, I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's fair to assume that Disney is going to accommodate international people separate from from people who are local. Um, second to that is that if they start splitting it up like that, I mean, I I've, I've seen this in California with the way that they did the annual passes where there was like the, the, the Southern California pass and the, and all that, um, it, it creates this weird, um, class system where, you know, we, we already have it (laughs) bad enough sometimes where, you know, people treat it as, you know, just because you bought DVC that you get, you know, priority or because you're an annual pass holder, you somehow get, um, you know, priority over other people. I wouldn't want to promote having um, a culture where it's like, you know, well, because I traveled here from the UK or from Canada or whatever that, you know, I get to bypass everyone else or I should get, you know, extra perks or whatever. Um the other side of that, I, I know what you're saying about, you know, it sucks that we can't travel, but, you know, this was something that, that, uh, when we had the discussions with our, our DVC guide when we were buying, they said, you know, you know, if you can't take a trip, renting is always an option. And that's still the case today is, you know, even if you can't, you know, if your points are expiring, um, I, I think in the short term, we just have to, you know, be prepared to rent our points or be putting off vacations and banking points and all that. Um, which, yeah, what a, what a great segue into our ad. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Um, it, you're right. It, it, you, we we are absolutely sponsored. Do you, do you want me to start with the ad right now, or <laughs> no? Or finish, finish what my you're thoughts. Saying. I was yeah. just kidding. I was kidding. Yeah, no. It's um uh yeah. I I guess you know I I don't think it's a good idea just because it causes more chaos than it helps. And you know even as an international member, if they offered me perks, I wouldn't I wouldn't turn them down necessarily. But I wouldn't be pushing for this either because I fully knew what I was buying into at the beginning. So, um, and, and yeah, I just, I don't like promoting the, um, the idea that, you know, because, because I can't get there because I traveled further than someone else that, you know, I get more priority because at the end of the day, we're all, we're all staying at Disney, right? Like it's, it's not, it's not that, you know, it should matter where you came from to get there. That's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a weird, I understand her dilemma here. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard, right? It's, it's, it's frustrating. It yeah. But like I, like I said, I, I think the answer to that is, you know, um, you know, rent out points and then, you know, take the cash and use it for something else in the interim. You know, even for myself, I'll, I'll tell you, I've, I rescheduled my next trip twice now and it sucks. You know, it, it absolutely sucks. And, and I've, I've been, I've been, annoyed and and all that because i had to but you know even like i i've pushed it till february of next year and, and i basically told myself already that if by february next year if something happens that i can't take the trip then i'm just renting those points and that's the end of it so yeah that's, that's the way to do it yeah 
Do we want to do we want to do the ad now or do we want to wait a few minutes? Well, we can do we can do the ad now. We I'm going to say, I mean, since I'm already talking about renting, I can uh, you know let the people know about a place where you can rent your points. Yeah, I, if we were like a really good <laughs> professional show after four I, I, years and 122 episodes, we'd be better at this transition thing. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I I I don't want to be better at it. Honestly, that's true. That's I, true. That's I, I, <laughs> yeah. I I I, I think uh, I think it keeps us honest at the end that's of the day. True. Yeah. That's true. That's true. All right. All right. So, sounds good. Yeah. So DVC Rental Store is a world of DVC company. And they offer magical vacations at an incredible value. Save up to 60% off retail rates at premium Disney resorts. DVC Rental Store now includes deposits as low as 25% at time of booking and a built-in cancellation policy for every reservation. As always, DVC Rental Store pays the most for members looking to rent their points. Want to learn more? Go to dvcrentalstore.com or call 1-855-DVC-RENT, that's 382-7368, and please let them know that Welcome Home sent you. Yeah, please support the people that support this show. We we appreciate it when you do. So. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Ready to let's talk, talk about, about some news? This. Yeah, let's 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 get into some news. Yeah, and I know I, I know Damon has a has an early out today, unfortunately. So uh, he's you know yes. got, the, got the kids' sports. So uh, so Damon wants to had talk a, about some. I had to move up some news. Yeah, I had it yeah. placed a little too low for my liking. I I should have put it up further. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, this really is. Do do we want to start with this or start with? The we can start with that when it's so good. What the the club cool? Yeah, well, Club Cool, hosted by Coca Cola, will return adjacent to the new Creation Shop in Epcot. Whew, Club this cool summer is too. Back. No, no, no. Like I thought, there was going to be a long way off. We're talking summertime, a couple months from now. Yep. So uh, the thing is, it's going to explore tasty drinks, and the space will have some new magic to bring the experience of Coca Cola to life. If it doesn't have Beverly. It can just <laughs> yeah how, go away. I was gonna say, how are they gonna make Beverly better? Is it possible <laughs> that instead of having the individual fountains, they're gonna do like the flavors within one of those freestyle machines, like the same old flavors but within the freestyles? Oh, or do you, or do you think Ooh, it's no. just freestyle machines? Now, well, I don't freestyle think machines, so. but with the old flavors though. I'm just no, saying, but the, the, but then you get weird mixes of those flavors, and you don't do that. Well, no, they can restrict it to whatever they want, though. Like, you know, they can make it so you can't add, like, orange and I don't, or something. I don't think know? so. But what's what's really interesting to me is that it's coming back now. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just – I can't imagine that it's not going to be back with some sort of Disney giving you your I, – I just can't imagine that it's a free-for-all like it was before. I can't. I just – I can't imagine that it is. You what you yeah. mean like they're going to charge for it or no 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 no, no, no just be... you know the cups and the uh, the, oh, the yeah. expensive yeah like yeah, it's it's, t- it's too high touch point right it's too high touch point and think about it you have to pull your mask down I have this feeling that what we're going to get in this new space is is maybe a you can go up and get a sample like maybe is there's a line and you can get it. I, I just don't think it's a free for all which takes away some of the craziness of it for now. I, mean, I don't listen. I'm going to tell you this for now is is for a while. So yeah. I don't know if you yeah. if you reintroduce it as a for now. I think you reintroduce it as you're going to have it going forward. And I think it's going to be a little different. The the, the chaos of Club McCool will, will be long gone, right? The throwing of soda at people the because floors. there is so much. <laughs> the throw, sticky floors. Oh, yeah. you don't want to try Beverly? Here, how about you just throw it in your face and then you're trying Beverly, right? <laughs> I, I've I was never say had that, that experience. Th- there's always the sabotage tactic where somebody, oh, yeah. you know, puts mixes Beverly in with the other drink and then, yes. yeah. I, I think we're going to miss some of that magic, um, but I am still glad that it will come back. I just think the experience is going to be a little different. And, and the thing is, the space will have some new magic. I, I think that is telling of, of what I'm talking about. I, I wonder if they're going to bring new flavors into, like, I wonder if we're going to have a different, I mean, I feel like it, they're going to have a hard time. They have to have Beverly there, but I, I feel like they could successfully they get rid of some to. of the other ones. They do. I, that's, that's a thing. But the thing is for what we envision Beverly as yeah. it, it's not what Disney envisions Beverly as. But I think Beverly, they understand that Beverly is like almost like a social media kind of thing. And think about like, it. The, the like social the, media you know, Morocco thing is now coming down. Which but I don't even know was a thing, by the way. <laughs> oh, I, I knew it was a thing. Here, that is a that whole was... other world. Like, yeah, that, you I know. Swear to you. Yeah. <laughs> but what's interesting, again, is I feel like, remember, what we think about Beverly as a rite of passage, right, is not necessarily what they think about it. So if you're talking about um, a, a different venue for getting your drinks, I don't know if Beverly makes the cut. It will be disappointing, but but I'm just not sure. 
right? If I can't get whatever, as much as I want of everything, I really don't know if I want a, a Beverly or tricking people to a Beverly. If I have to go up to a counter to get it, how many people are you really tricking? Yeah. It, it becomes a problem now. So, well, or, I, you know, maybe they'll do it that you like, you go up and you order, like, you know, say like, you know, give me three clips, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah like you get flight. like a flight. Yeah, yeah. And then that way, you know, you, you, you can play roulette with people. <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah. 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 I think where's everyone going to go? What's that? To drink these. Where are they all going to go? I, I feel they'll have a section like, because before there was like tables kind of, but you to have to side. social distance while your mask is down currently. Yeah. So, yeah. so they'll probably have some like sectioned off tables somewhere that you'll go in. Cause there was never a limit to McCool's. It was a definite free for all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be a limit now either. I, I really don't. I, I think this is still going to be like a free for all. <laughs> listen, uh, listen uh, with how much Disney pays Coca-Cola, like for all the stuff that, you know, the amount of soda they go through in a daily basis, I'm sure that what happens at, at Club Cool is a rounding error for them. So, <laughs> no, no, of course, but it's the touch point that we're really talking about. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. the touch point. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I, it'll be interesting. I don't know. Yeah, in, in the short term, there's definitely, it's going to be very different from what we're used to. And then I guess, you know, comes the question of when it gets back to a point where you don't have to worry about social distancing and all that, would they would they open it back up or would they figure out? By so. then? Yeah, it, it wouldn't seem worth it, right? No, I yeah. think we're going to get some new experiences in terms of things like this. Um, I wonder if it could be like super cool, like high tech, like again, like where you kind of place your order uh voice orders right and then it kind of like you get this little like you know sort of smoke and mirrors and then all of a sudden it you know <laughs> pushes out pushes out some you know jetson type platter with your drinks on it like that would be kind of cool hmm. oh yeah there yeah maybe they have like here yeah. maybe they have the things at a table and it's like you're sitting at the table and you order and you it know pops up through the every, middle yeah yeah everything yeah <laughs> either, either that or they use like yeah like vacuum tubes and it all like you know drops down onto your table or something i don't know I, I'm interested to see what this new magic is. I am interested to see what if they introduce new sodas and uh, you know if they keep some of the old ones. I just want that one. What's that one? That's like a. It's like a Boba? berry flavor. Oh, I forget what it's called now. Bebo. Bebo is good. Yeah, that one's good. Yeah, I think that's the, the watermelon one, right? The yeah. watermelon one's good too. Oh, the Fanta Melon Frosty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. I like Thailand. That one. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Keep that one. Uh, hopefully, I'm hoping they keep all of them and, and just add to them. I hope there's more. So. And so the the new location of this, and that actually we can jump over to what the the new mouse gears. It's going to be right next to the new mouse gear, which is now going to be called the Creation Shop. Creation yeah, Shop. And I was going to ask, where is this? Because it's not coming back exactly where it was, right? No, it is. It is. It's the old mouse gear building. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's the old mouse gear building, but Club Cool was just across from it. So is Club Cool going back? It's a location next to it, so well. That, I mean, that can be <laughs> that, that can mean a lot of things. It could it could, it could yeah. mean a lot of things. Uh, I I don't know. It's a good question. I I don't think that they actually said in the announcement. They just said it was going to be like next to it. Okay. Well, I guess I guess we'll have to wait and see, right? But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's coming fast, so. I'm I'm surprised, honestly. I didn't, I mean, and maybe this. I just haven't been following this closely enough. But I didn't think we were anywhere near. Uh, this stuff opening, but I guess we are. I, I guess they're almost done. So I, I guess you know, you know, I keep thinking back. Like the last time I was there, like buildings were still being demoed and everything. You got to remember that it's been like it's been it's a been good a year since yeah, we've been there, has. and and um, I, I guess one thing that always trips me up with Disney is that I'm like, how did they build this stuff so fast? But the problem is, is that where I'm from, we like construction is really about like three months of the year because the rest of the time it's too cold for like outdoor like roads and stuff like they have to work in a very limited window because of the temperature drop but in florida they don't have that restriction they can build pretty much all year round so i always forget that things happen yeah. a lot faster there just because of that <laughs> yeah i you know. It's that it is interesting. I, I I also well also you know the fact that Disney is basically its own uh, city, so they can like do permits much faster. They can get stuff done a yeah. lot quicker if they want to. I I'm, I'm just interested in this new cre. Well, I'm surprised they didn't keep the name Mouse Gear. I I, I thought they might. Mouse keep Gear's kind of nineties if you think about it. It does feel very nineties, yeah. And I mean, it's not going to look like if you call it Mouse Gear, then you're expecting that kind of cartoony 
inside look where obviously yeah. from the from the art here and you know obviously they're going for the idea too i'm guessing everything in this in this shop is going to be customizable i guess right I, kind of what it feels like i feel like or most of it <laughs> maybe but i feel like when they say creation shop they're saying like this is a place where you know we've created stuff and we're putting it on Could display be. so it's not necessarily that the customers are creating but you know I feel because again, you know, look at looking at the way Epcot is being redesigned, you know, with the festivals, you know, you know, um, uh, the arts festival, flower and yeah, garden, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I feel that they're kind of positioning themselves that, you know, this becomes a storefront where they can offer up, you know, the, the usual Disney stuff, but then also a lot of that exclusive stuff that you see from artists and whatever they're contributing to these festivals. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, I, I, they didn't really say anything about, you know, it just says new artist expressions that showcase the global contemporary icon that Mickey's become. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it doesn't say anything about, like, customizing stuff. But I just, when I hear creations, I think creating things, you know, like like you, you'll yeah. be creating things and creating customized things. So, I don't know. It's so, not always a good thing. <laughs> no, it's true. Uh, the art looks cool, though. I mean, like, listen, the concept art looks cool. I mean, it looks a lot more modern. It's not like that. Uh, Mouse Gear was always kind of like, uh, like, like Damon said, kind of nineties. Or you said nineties. Yeah. You, Trevor, you said. 90s. Yeah, I did. Yeah. It was. Yeah. I, I, right. I've. I always equated mouse gears to like back when I was not. Yeah, like when I would watch House of Mouse. Okay. Like it, it, it feels yeah. like that kind of vibe. Yeah, and this is kind of going along with like what they've done to like uh, the, the the some of the Disney stores and like the World of Disney at Disney Springs. Like they're yeah. making it it's a little more of like yeah, modernized, a little more upscale, and and you know I I think it still fits in with Epcot too. It like looks like it has some cool wood ceilings and a lot of natural light, so that's that's cool. I like it. Yep. Damon, did you want to talk about anything before you before you have to leave us for for sports? I wanted to talk about the maskless photos now. Oh yeah, let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Disney announced basically they changed the policy. Now guests can take maskless, maskless photos outside. Um, and you know, they, they still make you wear them at all times and you do have to be properly distanced to do this. So like, it's not, you can't be like, uh, you know, next to people doing this, but they're basically allowing you now to take your mask off and, and have a picture, which, um, you know, makes me feel like we're moving forward. It makes me feel like, you know, good that there's some things going away, but, uh, yeah, this will be interesting. So uh, Damon, I don't know what you want to say about it. No, I mean, I just, it's definitely going to be interesting. I, I wonder, I, I, yeah, I wonder where, where we're going to end up with this, right? It's just a matter of, I'm kind of curious to see, I, I'm hopeful that this works well. Yeah. And we're going to see. <laughs> You're just worried that they're going to have to take it back and put it put it back on? Yeah, yeah, I kind of am. So I, I hope this works well. So we'll, yeah. we're going to see. Yeah, the, the danger is going to be going into the summer is that even places where you get photos done, there's always people walking by, right? So it's – yeah, I, I could see where – you know, it would suck if they would have to pull back on that. But, yeah. And is this going to apply to – I mean, is this going to mean more photo pass out there? Is this personal – you know what I mean? Like, what does this mean? A more photo – yeah, so it's the photo pass photographers are allowing okay. this. Before, they would not allow you to – they would not take a picture of yep. you if you, were, if you weren't wearing the mask. So, Everyone's got to get cooler masks, and I think we'd all be good. <laughs> Just get cooler-looking masks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah no, I listen. This makes me feel like we're moving more towards, like, normalcy a little bit. You know, little tiny steps at a time. So that makes me happy. And, you know, as more people get vaccinated, uh, you know, hopefully hopefully this isn't an issue. But, um, yeah, so this is this is good. I mean, I for, especially for those of us that want to take pictures in front of in front of the castle or wherever else and, you know, want to want to have a maskless picture, that would be, that'd be cool. Yeah. Hey, you- you did actually spark something in my head, Damon, when you mentioned about, you know, it being photo pass photographers is that, you know, right now I, I just realized, you know, if you're there by yourself, you like, you know, how usually you would just take your own photos with your, your, your phone or whatever. You can't, you can't even do that right now. Yep. Do you suppose at some point they'll allow for people to, you know, take your mask off to take a selfie or whatever? Like I, but that's a lot harder to enforce, right? Like I feel that's something way yeah. later down the line, but you know, that you're right that, you know, this is kind of opening itself up to, you know, they are starting to relax a little bit at least. Um, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's no, yeah, it, yeah. It, I mean, it's, it, it's good though. It's good progress. Yeah. 
yeah, it's it's definitely like you said, it's moving in the right direction, and yeah, hopefully it's a sign that you know in the next couple of months here, things will at least relax enough to a point where you you know you don't feel like you you have to be wearing your mask all the time when you're there, right? Yeah, no, for sure. So that's that's I, I just think I see it as progress and as as a good thing, and you know, so I, I just it makes it feel like it's things are getting back towards normal and going in a better direction than they were. So yeah, I'm surprised Damon didn't want to talk about this lightsaber. <laughs> we lost him already. So I, yeah, he yeah he had to go. <laughs> yeah yeah he has to All go. Right. Like listen, I know people complain when Damon leaves early. He's his kid's got a soccer game. It is, it is what it is. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, so let's talk about this lightsaber since we're jumping around. Um, okay, what's driving me nuts about this is this was a this was a live thing that Josh Diomaro did. Um, he was the head of Disney Parks, mm-hmm. and uh, he, it was like a live stream that he did to announce you know uh, other news, which is was Marvel uh, Avengers Campus opening. But at the very end of it, he just kind of did like he basically pulled out like a real looking lightsaber and like a blade just kind of came out of thin air. Like a real lightsaber does. Okay, and he but, said it's real. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so, one, um, you know, he, you can say a lot of things and, you know, Photoshop is still a thing. Um, well, we do know <laughs> that they were working on real lightsaber. Remember, like, there was pa- there was patents recently where they were right, working on but, the, the well, more real lightsabers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess I, I'm kind of, my head's bouncing around with, you know, when you say it's real, like I, that's, I, that's I, a fair point. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how much like, th- so there's, um, there's a channel where uh, there's a YouTube channel where the, is this guy has, um, he has a welding shop. He's got a bunch of people working for him Yeah, yeah. and he, I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, he recreates different things and he actually, so like he's made like Thor's hammer and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he made he, a real lightsaber. Yeah, he real, made a real, real lightsaber. lightsaber. And, and the thing is, is that this thing was terrifying. Like, like it would cut through. Like he it was actually cutting through stuff with it, though. Yeah. So, so when when Josh uh, Demero says it's a real lightsaber, like, is this? <sighs> I I, I don't know what he's real. saying. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think it's real in that it's not going to cut through things, right? I think they've just been able to figure out how to make it so it's not the telescoping plastic. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, or I mean, because they did improve on that with the ones that they sell at Galaxy's Edge, right? So, but those aren't as easy to to carry around, right? So the I guess the 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 ideal thing would be something that can you know just appear out of nowhere like a lightsaber does but isn't like something you have to remove the blade or something that's there all the time right so i i think that's what he means by it's real because i don't think you could like you know kill a stormtrooper with it but right but but it's still real or it just say real or this just does not it does not compute with me <laughs> like that's <laughs> What's making me mad about it though is there's not a single video on the internet of it. It's like if this, this was a streaming event, how does not one person yeah, have a recording of this? And, and that's the thing. Like I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, where? Like, there was multiple sources on this though. Like this wasn't just one website that said this. A whole bunch of people, like a lot of people that were on this, uh, said something about it. I mean, it was on. Um, there were. I mean, I, there's news articles about this on like you know The Verge and like other places, like you know other sites other than Disney sites. So like this was actual news, <laughs> like, but but nobody yeah, but, has a video. But but again, the the thing that like I I keep holding on to. Okay, he he said it's real, but everyone's taking his word on it. Like there there's been no there's been no nothing beyond just that that you know live stream and there's no way to tell if that was photoshopped or like or not photoshopped but like you know it, it's so it's so easy to hype something up like that and especially on video and say oh yeah you know this is working and then when you see what it is in reality you know it's just another plastic lightsaber right like yeah i mean so you're trying to say like he got like you know uh you know ilm to do like <laughs> like special yeah. effects but i mean i think it was a live stream though so like i don't know if they could i mean they could have done it live i guess those, but those I, yeah those things can be done a lot easy like you can have somebody yeah you know they're doing post-processing effects on a live stream but also like i feel like he wouldn't have done that and teased that if it wasn't 
a real thing. Like, cause he, I mean, they knew that that was going to make news, right? Like they, they had to know that that was going to be and, news. And, and I think that's exactly why he did it. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I also am looking at it too, though. Like they filed a bunch of patents around this a while ago. And I, I do believe that they've created some sort of technology that makes lightsabers look real as real as they can be without, you know, like cutting through things, but like the effect of you press a button and the, the sabers there, you know, like I think that they've probably been able to figure that out at the, I, I just based on the patents I've seen. And I'm guessing it's for yeah. use in the star Wars hotel. Like, I think that's the only place it's going to show up. Like, I don't think you're going to be able to buy one of these. Like, I, I think this is more going to be for well, not, for, not an issue. Yeah. I guess, not I guess issue. the thing is, is if it's, if it's tied to a system, and there's like a yeah if, if they have a system in the background that is guiding this thing then you're right it won't make sense to use it outside of the parks um yeah i just i i'm uh i, I don't want to be super skeptical here but i'm being super skeptical <laughs> what are you doing being skeptical about? come on trevor buy into it it's real <laughs> i i, I want to believe that it's real but i also i don't know i've I, I've gone down this road too many times, um, as you guys know, you know, playing video games, um, you know, developers do this all the time where they will showcase something and, you know, at the press conference, it'll look amazing. And then what you actually get at the end is not what you expected. So, or, you know, or they had to pull back on special effects. They have to pull back on a lot of things. And so the end result is like, um, you know, a game that you thought was going to be amazing is, you know, lukewarm at best. Same thing I'm kind of taking here is, you know, you know, the yeah. press conference makes it look amazing and there's definitely a lot of talk around it. And that's definitely intentional. Um, I feel that, you, like you said, you know, there's going to be something cool with the lightsabers. But I, I think the problem is, is that showing off just a quick clip like this is building up a lot of hype in people's heads and, And it's going to, it's going to turn into something that, you know, people are going to be expecting, you know, a real lightsaber. And then they get there and find out that it's, you know, it's not what they were expecting. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, I understand that. I'm just, I'm just Googling here because. Yeah, you're right. I I cannot find anything like. No. Ah, that's so annoying. And I, and, and apparently I'm, I'm reading one Disney news site. Disney actually said that they will not release a video of the lightsaber, <laughs> but yeah. So that's, but, yeah, <laughs> but a lot of people are pointing to the, to the star Wars hotel, like the, um, the, uh, dojo, like where people will learn how to use lightsabers as being the, the thing that they're going to do this with. Um, but also, it says that it, the lightsaber came out of a little box, like a hilt, but much wider. So like, it's definitely not something that's like ready to go, right? Like it's obviously some sort of prototype of some sort. Um, and then this this article also has the patent that they filed a while ago around this, which is almost like a tape measure in a weird way. You know, like yeah. You, so so yeah. it's instead of it being a hard plastic tube, it's like a it, it's it's something flexible so that yeah. yeah when it retracts, it goes back nicely into the hilt instead of the you know the old plastic retracting thing it like it kind of curls up on itself was the idea right oh so walt disney imagineer scott trowbridge that's the guy that did galaxy's edge confirmed on twitter that the lightsaber showcase was in fact real not cgi and it's still not ready to be shown to the public oh so that's yeah, <laughs> yeah but he said he said a lot of questions today about whether the lightsaber that josh Yamar re- revealed today was real or cgi and whether i'd share f- photos or videos yes it was is really real and not yet <laughs> so there you go. I mean, I don't think they're lying about that. I think that's legit. I think they're trying to work. I mean, that's the holy grail for them, right? If they can make like a really cool lightsaber that's realistic, I mean, people would pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> yeah. So, and plus, you know, especially for the, uh, yeah, they're not putting out videos or anything though either. So, I, but it's really annoying that you can't find a video of it anywhere, like anywhere. You think see, someone would have see, it. <laughs> see, I, I feel like, yeah, like, did nobody, well, it's not that did nobody record it. I'm sure somebody recorded it, but are they able to post it? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> yeah. I get the feeling that anybody that has tried to post it has probably been taken down. Yeah, yeah, taken down really quick. So Yeah. But I mean, yeah, so the guy that, that created Galaxy's Edge, he's saying that it, it was not CGI, that it is real, but it's just not ready yet. It's a, obviously some sort of prototype. And, and again, that that's where like I was saying about the whole video game thing is, you know, they show off prototypes 
and yeah. the prototypes look amazing, but then when they get to the point of it actually being functional, they may have to dial back on things and yeah, then it's yeah. it's not as amazing as you want it to be, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I I'm I'm not trying to be super pessimistic, but I'm I'm trying to be realistic right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wish there was I wanted to see this video because all I've seen is people reporting on it and I just want to see the stupid I just want to see that part. I don't even yeah. care about the rest of the video. Yeah, just I want to see I, the part. I, I wanted to see the animation or, or not the but the the motion of how this thing came out be and I think that's probably why they don't want to show it is because there's probably something in the movement of it that gives away what it's doing if you look close enough. Yeah, like they right. haven't designed the hilt yet to make to hide like all of the mechanics that it takes to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably where it's at. Yeah. I, I but I mean they they filed this patent three years ago, so they obviously have been working on this for a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, so my concern is, you know, you know, fine, we we have a real lightsaber now. The next thing people are gonna want is, you know, force lightning. Right. Like it's going to be, how can I shoot lightning fing- lightning from my fingers? Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's a slippery I slope. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them that they could figure it out. I mean, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you, you can, they're like, that's like Tesla coil yeah. type stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, yeah. I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm just annoyed. I just want to see, I, I don't even care if it's like a bootleg video of somebody showing it on their cell phone, yeah. like recording it on their cell phone on their computer screen. Come on now. I just want to see it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do too, but I also don't. Well, yeah, no, nobody posted on our page if you find it because yeah, that could get yeah. us in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know if anybody has it, man. Like, it yeah. doesn't even seem like somebody tried to. Because I, I remember right after this news came out, I went right onto YouTube to see if I could find a clip of it, like before it got taken down, but there was nothing. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, and and I, I think the thing is, is a lot of time, like press conferences are usually so um, mundane. Like it, it's yeah, such, yeah. you know, pe- people who are thinking about, you know, a real lightsaber are not, you know, watching a press conference going, oh boy, is he going to show off a lightsaber, right? Like, <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Like nobody yeah. knew that that was going to happen. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But you think somebody would have recorded it at least for, you know, I don't know, for their site or something. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> But I guess we'll have to wait. I mean, I, I I tend to believe that this is something that's going to be at the Star Wars Hotel. So I, I don't know if we're going to have to wait that long for this. I, I just feel like it's going to be one of those things that maybe they will sell at some point and only at the Star Wars. Like, it'll be exclusive to Star Wars Hotel or Galaxy's Edge or both, you know? What, what would be cool is if they actually, eat, like, I know they have the lightsaber building, but if they offered something additional to that using this technology. What do you mean? Like, so, so like you do like lightsaber training and then oh, yeah, you build yeah. your own lightsaber. Like, well, that's what uh, they're doing in the hotel, right? I mean, they have the training, they have the training dojo. No, but, I, but I'm saying like, cause they have Savvy's, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like I'm saying shop, like, yeah. yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying if they offered it as something in the park. So it's so like, you don't have to go stay at the hotel to do it, Oh yeah, yeah. but you can have it as a, like I said, you know, that, that could be a next level of lightsaber building where you know, it's like, like, you know, that how they had the, um, the, the, or the Jedi training. Thing. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm like, where is the word? I don't know. Yeah. Word. What's the word? You're yeah. yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. Jedi training. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. So the Jedi training, but again, you know, that like, you know, it, that's a bunch of, you know, kids doing lightsaber training. If they yeah. turned it into like a whole experience where it's like, you know, you spend like an hour or whatever, you do the training, you get to use this lightsaber. Right. And then at, when you're done, you go and you build your own lightsaber as a Jedi or Sith or whatever. Right. Um, like that could be, that could definitely be another use for this. Right. Like it's, it, well, it yeah. does, it keeps it like it's not then exclusive just to, to the hotel. It becomes something that anybody can do. But then of course it's, you know, it's another like ticketed thing that you do. Yeah, this. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I, I, cause I, I feel like they could do this with the Star Wars hotel, right? Where they do yeah. the dojo and then they have you go into a workshop and build your own, right? Like, I feel like that could be a feature of it, right? And especially, you know, with how much you're paying, if you walked away with the lightsaber, it makes it a little more worth it. You know, if you don't have to pay it separately, if it's I, part of it, that I would cool. want a robe and a lightsaber. Just saying. 
Or you gotta have the robe. For, I mean, for you that, can't for that have... kind of money, like I would want the robe and the lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the robe. I mean, you can't not yeah. have the robe, right? I mean, so you gotta have the robe. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I just think this is cool. It makes me mad that I can't find it anywhere. Um, I feel like we need to get press credentials so we can be on these things in the future, <laughs> uh, just so I can watch this. Uh, yeah, you know, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> but I mean, like, listen, it like legitimately, like, if you look on Twitter of the people that watch this, they were like freaking out about it. It was apparently very cool. So I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, again, that that's where I'm. I, I'm a little leery of the hype train right now. So that's fair. That's fair. I get it. At least we know it's not CGI yeah. though. I mean, like, it's yeah, something, you know, yeah, that's online, you know, if, I mean, but. <laughs> yeah, if you know if it's if it's not CGI and if it was an actual practical effect that they use, then I'm you know I'm still interested. And yeah. but I like I said, I'm just reserving my my hype level on it because until you see it, yeah, and, and until I see it, it like in practical use, it's and and it could be again, you know, like they said, they prototyped it and it may not actually turn out the way that they wanted it to at the end of the day. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on the design that I was looking at, it looks like they'd have to have a pretty large hilt to do this. So I I don't know if they're trying to make it smaller or whatever they're trying to do here, but hmm. But anyway. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we probably well, talked enough about uh, yeah. about that. Um, let's talk about buses. <laughs> yeah, that's way way more boring. Um, yeah. Let's- yeah, but <laughs> But at least, at least it's uh, some news. I mean, it's it's Mirrors has announced their their Magical Express, uh, you know, replacement service, which is pretty much the exact same thing as Magical Express, except it's not going to be free and it's not going to be through Disney. So, <laughs> but they're going to have the same buses doing it and the same, you know, yeah, it, same exact schedule and uh, luggage handling too. Uh, you know, probably probably going to be the same place in the airport too. You know? Probably. And, yeah. and it, it's called Mirrors Connect for anyone that's wondering. So um, the understanding is, is that it, they'll have it, you know, they'll have it up and running by, so January 2022. Um, the, the luggage transportation is interesting because the company that was doing the luggage transportation before um, went out of business. So it sounds like Mirrors is filling that gap. So they're going to have, it, you know, it'll probably be like a, like a, an all encompassing service where, you sign up for it, you get your, uh, your transportation, you get your luggage and everything. Um, but, but of course it's an extra paid cost, but like I've said before on the podcast, you know, to me, that's not a big deal because I've done it for years going to Disneyland. And, and actually I think even through mirrors, I've, I've done this in the past where you, you book a shuttle bus and it's really no different than the magical express. It's just, um, I, I can see where people can, you know, you know, this isn't going to be as attractive because, you know, with the Magical Express, it was like that one stop shop thing, right? You know, you didn't have to, you know, book your park tickets in your hotel and then go call somebody else about transportation. It was like, you know, everything was covered under Disney. And with this, it's, you know, yeah, you, you book all your, your hotel and everything and then you got to go over to Mirrors, you know, pay them however much it is for, for the transportation, which, um, again, you know, you, you get, you get a package deal or, or you, there is the option for that. And usually it's cheaper, or at least that's what I found was, you know, if, if you paid for, you know, a round trip fare, it was cheaper than paying for, you know, uh, a trip there and a trip back. Yeah. And that, and then again, you know, same thing is, you know, you're able to book your time and sit and uh, yeah, it, it really shouldn't be much different. Like, like honestly, um, you know, even when we were going to like using the Magical Express, half the time the buses that were showing up were just Mirrors buses. It wasn't a Magical Express bus like that, like the the ones yeah, with the like skinned on it. with with yeah. all the Disney stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, it was already a Mirrors bus, so it's like again, you know, nothing much is changing here. The only thing is, is that instead of the you know this being worked into your ticket price for your hotel room is that it's a, an additional cost which i again and i can see where people will say well you know disney should lower their costs because of you know your to accommodate paying. for that yeah. yeah but i i think the um i think the concession that was had here is you know disney you know the reality is is because of pandemic and everything you know disney is trying to they're trying to cut costs. And I think from their standpoint, it was easier to cut this off. And, you know, they're not going to lower their costs because, you know, they're still trying to recoup money that they've lost. So, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying that, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, Hey, let's pay more money for everything. But 
It's the reality of it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I understand where it makes sense. Yeah. And, and like I said, for me, this is not going to this is not going to sour my trip personally because you know, like I'm going in February. This is just going to be another thing on my you know, on my planning to do list. Is you know, I'll call up mirrors. I'll I'll book and and actually to that point too is you know I may not even use mirrors at this point. I may you know look at getting. Uh, you know, another shuttle service or something, you know, see what, see what options are out there. And, but again, you know, it's, you know, book all that stuff at the beginning of the trip and then you still don't have to think about it while you're on the trip. And and that's, you know, some of our listeners said that is, you know, they, they like the idea of, you know, you know, everything is taken care of and you don't have to think about it. It's by the time you get to your trip, it's still the same thing. Like you, you still, you still book through this service and you don't have to think about it in the sense of, you know, you don't have to pull out your wallet and make sure that you're, you're paying for something. It's all booked, but, um, you know, you still got to make sure you have your, uh, your, whatever your pass is. you know, you know, usually they give you like a, like a barcode or something that you, you give to the bus driver and then he scans it to make sure that you, you know, you actually have a reservation on that bus. But, um, yeah, again, it's, not surprising and and it's good because it it does fill that gap until the train comes whenever that is but i also don't think it's a bad thing be, because also it gives people the opportunity to explore other services cuz yeah. even you if know uber's going to work out for you or you know whatever other service yeah yeah and and, and to that end like like i i know for for myself, like on our last trip, I, I, I'm, I'm not one to use those rideshare services usually like in, uh, like, um, when I'm at home, uh, I have a car. I don't, I don't think about, you know, calling an Uber or anything like that. But when I, you know, when we're traveling, it's actually kind of nice, you know, you just call up, you know, it's like a taxi service, right. But it's, it's cheaper. You know, you call up, you get your, your transportation to wherever you're going and, you know, it costs you, you know, 10 bucks or whatever, you know, well in Disney, you know, it was like 10 bucks to, to take an Uber from one place to another. Um, obviously going to the airport would cost more, but, but again, you know, it's just having those options and it's having the ability, you know, you know, this, this gives me, I guess, you know, it wasn't that I didn't have the choice before, but I was a lot less inclined to look at those things because of the fact that the magical express was there. And I kind of, I kind of conceded that the, you know, you know, Hey, it's a free service. You know, I'm not going to go out of my way to get, uh, you know, an Uber or something like that just because, or, you know, to get to the, the hotel, because, you know, I could just put up with being on the magical express and, you know, yeah, if, even if it's busy and there's a bunch of people on there, so what, but now, you know, maybe I'll actually think about that and go like on, on my next trip, I may explore, you know, Hey, if I can get a, you know, a shuttle van or something where me and my family can, you know, have a, a relatively quiet trip to and from the airport, I may look into that. Uh, and, and actually to that point, I did that, um, on our last trip to Disneyland, we did that because normally we would pay for the, the, uh, the, the mirror shuttle. But on our last trip, we, uh, there, I can't remember the name of the company, but they, they offered these, like, it was like these 10 passenger vans. And so we booked one of those and it just so happened that there was nobody else on the van. So we basically got, you know, a private, a private van ride to and from the airport, which was nice. Like it was, it it was nice not having to deal with that chaos of, you know, like where, you know, you know, where'd my luggage go, all that kind of stuff. It was just, nope, get in the van, you know, have a nice ride to and from the airport. And then it was all taken care of. So I do wonder, I, you know, they say luggage handling in here. I, I don't know if that means that they're going to pick up your luggage at the carousel or, you know, from wherever and bring it right to the resort. Or if you're going to need to pick up your luggage still and give it to them and they'll throw it under the bus. And, you know, I don't know what they mean by luggage <laughs> handling. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you mean store it under the bus, not. Yeah. You, you know, carefully <laughs> place it, toss it as hard as they can. Um, Sorry, th- <laughs> throw it under the bus. It can mean. Oh yeah, things. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean, though. But yeah, like I, all the storage containers yeah. are are on the bottom of the bus. So yeah, uh, yeah. So I I don't know what that means. I don't I don't know which way they're they're going with this. So I guess we'll we'll have to wait and see. But you know, kind of like we were talking about this before. This 
Magical Express is only around for 15 years. Before that, you had to figure out a way to get to the airport uh, from the airport to your resort. So uh, this is just kind of going back to then. And and you're right. I mean, I, I don't know how much Magical Express cost them, but I'm sure it wasn't cheap. I'm sure it was a lot of money. So and it was a great feature for for a lot of guests. And uh, you know, I, it just wasn't something I used. But I was also thinking to myself too. You know, every time I, I'm sure you get the surveys too. I, you know, I always get the, like the survey after I go because they always end up for whatever reason grabbing me when I'm in the park and and scanning my magic band and asking me those couple questions and sending me the thing afterwards. You know what I'm talking about? You get those yep. surveys? Oh yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've done those. Yep. I've noticed. I, I've just was thinking about this. Like every time I've had those surveys, they've always asked how I arrived, like by what method I arrived. Right. So I, I have to think that Disney knows that that magical express usage was on the decline as part of this, you know, that uh, people were using Uber, people were using other ways to get there. And, and, you know, so they maybe felt like this was a, not that, not that big of a deal to get rid of it, but it is for a lot of people. I, we, I understand that, but I, I'm sure that they saw, they know the numbers, they saw what people were using and, and saw the, the decline in, 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 you know, the usage of it. So. Yeah, you're right. Is that, you know, there, this may have just hit that breaking point. And honestly, you know, that this could have been something that, um, was just accelerated. Like they, they may have already been planning for this because yeah. of, like you said, if, if there was a decline in people using Magical Express because of Uber and, and, and other ride sharing services, um, that, you know, that could have already been the driving factor behind this and they just sped it up because of COVID. Yeah. Um, but, and, and, you know, even for myself, like I said, you know, we've, we've used the Magical Express just because it was convenient and it was already included. Like it was kind of a, you know, why would I turn this down and go rent a car when, when, you know, it's already there. Right. And I, and, and I guess, you know, if, if I was planning to, you know, go other places, I would think about renting a car, but you know, we, we did use the magical express and, and actually, I guess t- to that point, like, you know, the last couple of trips, it, it used to be, um, you know, I, I remember, um, I remember years ago, the magical express was always like, you know, here, you know, this bus is going to all stars. This bus is going to, um, Coronado. Like it was, it was a single bus, like for each resort. Yeah. But the last couple of trips, it was like, for us, it was like, you know, it was going to the Polynesian. It was going to the Grand Floridian. It was also going to. <laughs> we're number um, three of four resorts yeah. that they're stopping. At. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, like it, they were doing multiple stops, which I, I guess that, that again does speak to the fact that, you know, it, there was a perception that it was always busy, but that was because they were, you know, compacting people together i guess if it was like you know if there was just a dedicated bus for the polynesian and we were the only ones on the bus i would have been like huh okay (laughs) yeah exactly exactly i i'm sorry i just pulled up facebook for a second and i Mm -hmm. saw a video of uh of the the hour-long video that disney put out of uh baron zemo dancing from falcon and winter soldier i can't stop laughing at it it's just I, do you know what I'm talking about? Have you been watching I, Falcon I, Winter Soldier? I <laughs> haven't watched the the dancing bit yet. I've heard a lot about oh the extended God. cut on it. <laughs> I, it just popped up on my feed, and it just it's killing me because his dance moves are roughly equivalent to my dance moves, which are not good. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty fantastic. If anybody is watching Falcon and Winter Soldier, and the funny thing was, are, have you been watching the show, Trevor? I watched the first episode. I've, I'm honestly You're a little behind. behind on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so I, it's in the third episode that he dances. Right. And I, I didn't mm-hmm. even notice it. Like I didn't notice it, but then found out that it was like a big thing on the internet afterwards. Everybody was talking about his dancing. Cause he's basically doing like every lame dance move that, Ed, you know what I mean? Yeah, like but, he's like just, the, uh, yeah. the, the wedding dance, like, you know, I'm here, yeah. but I have no rhythm kind of yeah ex- exactly it's it's just terrible dancing and i just didn't notice it completely because there's so much going on in the scene i just straight up didn't notice it and then because it became a thing on the internet disney was apparently prepared for, prepared for this uh and put out an hour-long video of just him dancing and it's amazing the, it's hilarious <laughs> the, the fact that they so hold on is, is it all like coming a, yeah well no is it like an hour-long cut or is no, it, it- it's literally just an hour long of him dancing, but uh, I mean, it's it's amazing, and it's a great show. I'm really really enjoying it so far. But um, that that whole him dancing for an hour is just really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Um, yeah. So anyway, if you haven't seen that, go check that out. Because when I found out that they that Marvel did that, it was it was cracking me up. I they obviously anticipated that this was going to be a viral thing, right? Yeah. It's it's weird how they are. It was the same thing like in WandaVision with uh, Agatha, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, they, uh, you know, Marvel is really good at paying attention, I guess, to the stuff that fans latch on to. I, yeah. I, I, I think Disney as a whole is very good at making things go viral. Like they know the things that are going to, that's why I, you know, what we were talking about before. Oh, with, with Beverly, I think they understand that Beverly is a social media thing. Like, yeah, like that's a thing. Like, and I don't think that they would get rid of it for that reason, because it is a thing that people post on, you know, Instagram and social media, you know, like that's it's Beverly is its own thing. It's like the purple wall thing, which I don't get, but like Beverly is like that. So I, and I think Disney likes that kind of stuff. Like they want to be, you know, the most Instagrammed castles, of, you know, uh, uh, most Instagram image of the castle is the castles, right? Like they want that kind of stuff because it's good for business. So like, yeah, I, I think they're very, very good at knowing what's going to go viral and preparing for those things. So, so here's an interesting thought about that. So Beverly is, it was originally an Italian soda that, yes. that Coca-Cola had and they stopped selling it in Italy, but they continued to keep it in, in Epcot and you can still get it in Disney Springs. So that conversation goes basically, okay, guys, I know you stopped making the soda, but people really love trying the soda because it's so gross and tricking their friends into doing it. So we want to pay you to keep manufacturing the soda so that we can have it in our park so that people can be grossed out by it. Okay. I don't, I don't even <laughs> think that's how that, I don't even think the conversation I, goes, we're going to pay you. I think it goes, we're Disney. We buy millions of dollars worth of stuff from you every year. Our con- your yeah, contract with you will have extraordinary Beverly. valuable, valuable. You will do this. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> like, you will have Beverly on tap, but I mean, yeah, like, but no, exactly. Like, like go ahead. but no, the, the thing is, is Coca-Cola is, you know, equally a large, like, sure. They're a massive multinational company as well. So, you know, it, it's not like Disney just telling them. I'm sure there was a conversation there, but still it's, uh, yeah. you know, you know, make Beverly for us and them going, well, I'm sure that I'm sure, you know, Coke probably understands it as well, but it's still a weird concept that, you know, Hey, this is something that nobody likes. So let's make more of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's true. That's true. So, I mean, it's, it's literally like. I, I would think that this that that the contract of Disney World to Coca Cola is pretty valuable. Yeah. So, yeah, I would think so anyway. But anyway, we, we kind of went down a bit of a rabbit hole there, and I and we were originally talking about or well going back to Marvel and, and all that kind of stuff. So oh yeah, look, this is a good this yeah. is a good transition. Yeah. No, I just I I just had to I the the video of him dancing is absolutely amazing. So <laughs> I'll I'll have to go and watch that after I watch the episode. You, you only need to watch like five minutes of it, and yeah. it's like to be because it's just hilarious. It's a good for a pick me up. So anyway, but anyway, speaking of Marvel, so so they announced that the uh, the Avengers Campus is opening on June fourth in California Adventure. Which, you know, thank goodness that, you know, we're, we're, we're finally getting that. And, and, you know, this is good. You know, it's, you know, the, the parks are going to open up at the end of April. And it sounds like they're, you know, they want to get people back in the parks as soon as possible. And they want to start opening these things up, which, you know, I guess the, the surprising thing is, you know, we've talked about rides like Tron and Ratatouille and, and, you know, specifically Ratatouille. We're like, why are they not opening? this ride or opening the area up and and the initial thought was well because of covid you know it doesn't make sense for them to open it yeah but then on the on the west coast they have a whole land here similar ideas there there's rides and everything but they've chosen to go ahead and open it which i i guess you know maybe this is a bit of a different story because of the fact that disneyland has been closed for so long that yeah. they're you know they they know there's some pent up uh, desire to go there. And if they didn't open the Avengers campus, I'm sure that a lot of people would have been clamoring for that pretty quick anyway. Right? Well, especially if it's done, like if it's ready to yeah. go, just open it. <laughs> like 
it's different for Disney World, like you were talking about. Like, I, I every piece of real estate at Disneyland is valuable, right? Yeah. Whereas, like Disney World, it's like, like we we can just keep this area closed; no one's going to notice. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I guess the thing to think about too is where the Avengers Campus is. Like this, yeah. this was formerly uh, Bugs Land, which sat between um, where Tower of Terror is, so so Hollywood Drive or sorry Hollywood Boulevard, and um, and Cars Land. Like it was, it was sandwiched right in between those two areas and it is it is a fairly large area if they kept it closed off um that becomes <laughs> it creates a lot of bottlenecks in california adventure for starters yeah. because because i know like i i would cut through the back of bugs land many times getting from like tower of terror over to Radiator Springs Racers, or even just, you know, going over to Pixar Pier, there's like a kind of a back road that goes from, uh, it goes from Hollywood Boulevard, Bugs Land, through Radiator Springs, like right in front of Radiator Springs Racers, and then it actually connects you right to the food court in uh, Paradise, or uh, Pixar Pier. Um, so... Yeah, the, I I think there's a lot more logistical reasons why they would open it versus like yeah. Ratatouille, where Ratatouille was kind of in a back corner. But uh, yeah, I have to say there's some I, I I knew about like some of the stuff here, right? Like they they announced like some of this stuff, right? Yeah. But there's some things in here that I've never seen pictures of. Like the, I didn't know that there was a Doctor Strange area, like. I think I think I remember reading something about him training recruits in the Mystic Arts. I think I remember that, right? Like I think that was, but I I don't remember seeing like concept art of what it was going to look like, and it looks really pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it, I I guess the thing was, well, yeah, because we knew about the uh, um, uh, the microbrewery, the Ant Man. Yeah, we knew about micro- that. Yeah, yeah, and then um, the Spider Man ride, and then. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, now that you think about it, you're right. The the Doctor Strange stuff never came up, and it's like a whole. I mean, area like there's a whole pretty big thing here. If you look at the photos and the videos that Disney put out, yeah, it's it looks and it looks cool. I mean, it it looks really it looks like a really neat section of the park. Mm-hmm. What and I I mean, I guess after seeing Radiator Springs. Yeah. Th- this is a case of, you know, on, on the flip side of, you know, talking about hype, I can see where it's justified to get hyped up about this. Like, I, oh, yeah. I, I feel like this will definitely be one of those lands that you walk into there and you will just be blown away. Like it's, it'll be, they're really good at, um, like, I, I don't know what it is about California adventure, but it feels like they've got a lot more liberty to be immersive with it. Hmm. And so, yeah, but but I guess you know it's it's very similar to like Hollywood Studios, right? Like you know walking into uh, Galaxy's Edge or Toy Story Land. It's it's that same kind of feeling, right? Oh yeah. But but on the flip side, like with Disneyland, like I know the Galaxy's Edge is in Disneyland, but um, yeah, it, it felt like for a long time, I guess that you know they they were doing things like really this was before Cars Land, so so like years ago. They were doing things, but it was very clear like there was there was budget <laughs> constraints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Budget time. constraints. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah th- with these new lands, it's definitely more and more feeling like they realize that, you know, you can't you can't scrimp on the or uh Yeah, you can't yeah, you can't yeah, you, yeah, I get what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, you, you can't uh yeah, you can't you can't be cheap because you know, people, people will know that you're cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have to say, I also, I mean, I think they confirmed this before they just teased it, but they have a video on the parks blog of, of the Spider-Man robot doing the aerial uh, acrobatics above the sky. Like yeah. I want to go there just to see that. J- just, like, just to stand there and watch a robot get flung. <laughs> I mean, but it looks, they have it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a video of it dressed, the, the robot dressed like Spider-Man, right? Like I've seen the yeah. video of like them testing the robot, but like, they have one now of it dressed like Spider-Man and it looks insanely cool. Like I just can't even imagine walking through this land and then you see Spider-Man go flying through the sky. Like that's incredible. <laughs> like, you know, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I almost wish that my son was like five years younger because you know, that like for little kids, that's going to be like one of those childhood defining moments. We talk about for little right. kids. I, it's going to be an adult you know, <laughs> defining moment for me. <laughs> I, I know, but but the, but you know, we we already kind of know what 
what's up with it. Like, like you know, just you like know, the technology behind it. Yeah, yeah. J- you know, just just you know, arbitrarily seeing Spider Man fly, like not not even you know, like seeing Spider Man is one thing, but seeing Spider Man flying through the air, like if I was a kid and I saw that, that would like. That would be cemented in my head for the rest of my life. <laughs> See, but like even even knowing how it works, it's no less incredible to me. Like True. you know what I mean? It's, yeah. <laughs> like even knowing like how they I mean, and I really don't know how it works. I just saw a video of them testing it in you know Imagineering Story and like some of the other videos they put out. So like I, I don't know actually know how it works, but I mean just seeing it is incredible. And I, I'm like blown away that they're doing this and uh, I mean, and let's also note too, this is not the end for this land. There's a, there's an e-ticket ride that they're going to build as well that I guess is on pause for now, but there, there was, I don't think it was ever even announced. I think they just said that there was going to be another major attraction, um, yeah. but that we assume is on hold at this point, but um, there's supposed to be another major attraction that shows up in, in this land as well. So it's not just the Spider-Man ride and the already existing uh, Tower of Terror, you know, uh, which is now, uh, what do you call it? Mission Guardians. Breakout, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now Guardians Mission Breakout. There's, there's a whole another ride that they're going to build uh, that they have not really announced the details of. Uh, that's you know still years away, but you know it's still cool that they're gonna they're gonna expand this even further, and um, it seems like this is gonna be a really cool place for uh, character greets too, uh, which is really cool because uh, the, what they're saying: Iron Man, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, uh, Black Widow, Ant Man, the Wasp, Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor, Loki. I mean, that's gonna be. I mean, that's gonna be awesome, right? That, that's gonna be yeah. a place you go for like the character stuff. Like you don't, you don't even need anything else besides that. <laughs> so <laughs> you know. Uh, as you were listing off all of those uh, characters, I was thinking about which ones made it through Infinity War, <laughs> or rather Endgame, I guess. <laughs> well, they're still going to have Black Widow there, uh, you know, even though, spoiler alert, everyone, she's dead. But Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, gonna... again, just, just thinking about that, I'm like, huh, that's going to be awkward yeah. but but on the flip side of that you know they're you know not just for the you know those current characters you know all the movies that they have coming up you know it's so easy to to have those meet and greets through through this area now right like it, it gives them a place for all the marvel okay. characters where you know regardless of the movie like you know from wandavision you've got uh uh monica rambo uh, aka photon um, yeah. that's going to be coming up. Like there, there's going to be a ton of, a ton of stuff there. And yeah, like you said, you know, good reason to go back and visit this place again in the future after it's. Yeah, open. Uh, totally. Who do you go first? Who who do you go? And, and if you're going to do the character grade, who do you go meet? Hmm. <clears throat> who would tough, I? Right? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess for me, like I, I know they've done Doctor Strange in the past, but I still would like to meet Doctor Strange. Like, I like Doctor Strange. Doctor yeah. Strange is an underrated Marvel movie. I feel like it is, and and, and I just I like the character. I I like the idea of like he's, you know, like like crazy powerful, but at the same time, like like he knows why he can't interfere with things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I see. I, I've seen the videos of people uh, meeting with Groot. And uh, because they were doing Groot, yeah. Groot meet and greets, I would want to do Groot. Uh, but I'd also, I would like to do Loki. Loki's cool. I like Loki, so oh, I'm yeah. excited for the Loki series. I would definitely go take a picture with Loki. Lo- Loki and Loki's on par with like Gaston and the Evil Queen. <laughs> exactly. Like exactly. The, it would. It would. Oh God! Could you imagine meeting like all those characters? That, like actually, just having Loki and the Evil Queen. Going back oh, and yeah. forth would be an amazing <laughs> character interaction. Like I, I know Disney would never do it, or I shouldn't say they would never do it. I mean they they could do it, but yeah, man, that would be cool. <laughs> it would be cool. It would be very cool. Yeah, it would be very cool. All right, we're, we're at an hour thirty three minutes. Yeah, we should we should, sh- we should up, probably right? wrap this up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Give me one second. Since we're fanboying over here about uh about all the Marvel characters, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could stop fanboying and just yeah, be excited to go check this out at some point. Well, you know, I you know Damon had to leave, so you know this is our opportunity to talk about all the Disneyland stuff and everything. Well, and also all the Marvel stuff because yeah. Damon doesn't care more about the Marvel stuff. So yeah, so so yeah, we're, which we're, is we're... weird because you think Damon would. It seems like it's up his alley, but you know, no, I mean that not not everyone's into Marvel, and that's fair. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's that's cool. Yeah. I mean, okay. you know, I think less of him because of it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Anyway, continue. Yeah. Well, we'll bring that up on the next podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Um, so as usual, if you guys want to get a hold of us, make sure you reach out to us at welcomehomepodcast at gmail.com. We get, you know, lots of listener questions through there. Um, you guys are great about, uh, communicating to, uh, to us, um, through our email. And if, uh, you would rather get a hold of us on Facebook, uh, you can also find us on Facebook as welcome home podcast. Uh, there's also the welcome home, uh, Disney waitlist, which is our Facebook group. If you haven't joined it yet, you should probably join it. Cause as we said earlier in the show, you know, we've got a lot of, a lot of great people in there. It's a really good community, uh, good discussion. And, you know, if you have DVC questions, that's a good place to ask. Cause we got a lot of smart people in that group. Uh, if you guys, uh, want to follow us on YouTube, you can find us on YouTube as welcome home podcast. Uh, spoiler alert, Tom's going to be taking a trip uh, at the end of the month and you should see some videos on there. So you should probably make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so you can check all that out when it gets posted. I'm going to have some cool stuff to share. I'll say that. Yep, exactly. So, so make sure you guys are looking out for that. Also, uh, same thing. Uh, uh, we have an Instagram, which is welcome home picks when, uh, you know, t- Tom said he'll hopefully be able to post some stuff on Instagram, or I guess you said your wife will probably be in charge of that because I- I'm going to give my wife control of the Instagram yeah. <laughs> and she'll do all the Instagramming because I don't uh, understand Instagram. So she'll she'll do some Instagramming for us. Exactly. So think meals, you know, we're going to we're going to eat around the world. So we'll do a lot of that, you know, and we've got some other stuff. So we'll, 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 we'll Instagram some stuff for sure. Yeah. So so keep an eye out for that, guys. And last but not least, if you guys would like some of our merchandise, if, uh, you know, you want to get a shirt or a mask or a mug that says Welcome Home Podcast on it, uh, you know, maybe you have a trip coming up and you you need some shirts, uh, make sure you go to store.welcomehomepodcast.com and uh, pick up a shirt from there. And as usual, if you guys, um, if you've listened to us on iTunes or really any service that allows you to leave reviews, we do appreciate you guys leaving reviews, you know. One star and five star, although, you know, one star is... No, no. Well, it's five star. <laughs> Tom, Tom likes the five stars, but, you know, we, we like the feedback. We we obviously read it and uh, we do listen to you guys. Um, you know, make sure it's constructive, though, because, you know, just saying that, you know, you know, Tom or <laughs> not Tom. Uh, yeah, you know, da- me. I don't like Except Damon, me. you know, you know, <laughs> saying I don't like Damon is Email me that. Like, yeah. email me those mean reviews and then, you know, <laughs> like, t- don't put one star. Just email me and say, hey, I hate Damon. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then just don't leave me a review at all. That's, <laughs> you know, or the, five the, star, you know. And again, the thing is, is, you know, just saying I don't like Damon is not constructive. So we know that, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't like Damon either. No, I'm, just, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, please, please do leave review, reviews for us. We appreciate yeah. it. Uh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to Welcome Home Podcast so you can be reminded every time we release a new episode. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, just about any place you can find podcasts. You can find us. Just look for the one that says DVC and Disney. Uh, that's that's us. So just a reminder to our listeners, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only we are not employed by the walt disney company and as such all opinions on this expressed on this show can't speak are our own so please consult a uh, dvc representative or disney cast member for more information about anything we talked about today huge thank you as always to uh dvc rental store for sponsoring this episode and for being a a good partner of the show please check them out uh join us next time for more disney parks discussion of course more dvc talk we hope to see you all real soon Skipper Albert Awal, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Do a hunt when we hit a chair. How she can cuddle is no.